Hi, my lovelies. Welcome to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. For those of you guys returning, welcome back, my lovelies. First of all, I want to apologize. Do not mind my crazy ass hair. <laughs> we are, I'm actually in the process of working with a few clients for self-healing. And this is why shadow work is extremely important. But I'm going to break it down and make it the most simplest form of you understanding and what you can do to actively or proactively take steps that are going to help you heal those parts of you. Now, when we talk about manifestations or when we talk about shadow work, shadow work is something that has always been uh, a necessity for those of you guys that practice. You already know how this goes. Anyone that is in the process of manifestation or that have difficulty manifesting, they are often, you know, asking me or, or, or asking me wanting to get feedback in regards to why is it so difficult or why is it so hard for them to actually manifest? And if you know about shadow work, then you know that it has a lot to do with that. But for those of you guys that don't know, what is shadow work? Shadow work is the unconscious, right? The subconscious deep that is engraved that you experienced in early childhood and that you never healed from. If anything, we suppress that and it stays right in back of our mind and you react based on your self-conditioning. A lot of your attitude, a lot of your personality traits, a lot of that has to do with shadow work. So whenever we are trying to work or heal through our shadow or our shadow side, what it is, is basically, basically acknowledging those parts of ourselves that we feel shame, that we suppress, that we don't talk about. Um, and healing through that is not all, only liberating, but it also goes hand in hand with that of manifestation. Why? Because if you do not feel that you are worthy or that you deserve whatever it is that you're trying to manifest, it's going to be really difficult for you to actually manifest that. So again, it's about self-limiting beliefs that stem from very early childhood. The best way of describing it is as an example, when you were a child, let's say you started kinder and you accidentally piss yourself. <laughs> the whole class found out it was embarrassing. And right then and there, your teachers, you know, they, instead of being, let's say, instead of them being compassionate and understanding, um, were very judgy or made you feel like you were less than, or like you should be ashamed of what you did. And you grow up with this deep engraved in you that you feel ashamed. You feel like people criticize you or they judge you. And that's how you start to create your personality. That's how you start to mold yourself. It's the same thing as, as an example, um, the first time you ever were in a relationship and they made you feel as if you were very hard to love. So then you go about carrying all of, all of this junk that, uh, essentially is clinging onto your energy and you're working on manifestations now and you're trying to align yourself to that. But how do you align yourself to that when you have unresolved issues within yourself that limit what you're capable of making happen or achieving based on your own beliefs? Okay. So this is something that, like I said, I've been working with a few clients uh, in self-healing and others that of manifesting. And I've come to realize that most often the ones that have difficulty manifesting have a lot of traumas that they haven't completely healed from. And I was in deep meditation and I was beginning to trance and that was my main focus. I wanted my spirit army to give me clarity or insight. How can I explain or how can I make my clients, uh, those of you guys that watch my channel, how can I make it easier for you guys to be able to work on your shadow side, to be able to understand what comes with that and how it affects our everyday life? 
Uh, it affects your relationships, how you deal with other people, how you react, sometimes how we self-sabotage. So I wanted it to be very clear and transparent and easy for you guys. And when I was tapping into all of these energies and went into a trance, they showed me almost like, <clears throat> they showed me as if I was speaking to myself and the moment that I was triggered or the moment that I felt something, let's, let's say, for example, you're trying to manifest love. Love is a big one, right? And often I find that uh, clients or, you know, followers start to manifest other things that they're not that attached to, meaning that they're not that obsessed over manifesting like that without an issue. But the one thing that they're very, very connected to, they're very attached to, they have difficulty manifesting. And I'm giving guys example, relationships, defense mechanisms that we usually do when we don't like to take self-responsibility because that's what shadow work is too. It's understanding that the not so good parts about ourselves that still are miraculous because they make us us, but we have a deeper understanding of them. So as an example, you're trying to manifest love. And usually what I hear is Pinky, yes, I'm, you know, I'm having more suitors, I'm going out, but they're not exactly what I'm trying to manifest. They either are committed 100 percent and I don't know where they kind of pull back and they're not as open as initially they were, et cetera. So then that brings the question, what is it about you that you feel you don't deserve it? Because you're the only one, when we talk about manifestations, you are the only one that decides what you're willing to receive, accept, and what you push away. So a regular person would say, you know, of course, I want to be happy. Of course, I want to be in a committed relationship. I want to know what true love is, etc. When I ask the question, do you feel worthy? Automatically, we say yes for two reasons. One, because we're either ashamed to admit that there is a part of us that feels unworthy or that feels like we don't deserve that or like we'll never experience that. And of course, it stems from early childhood. And the number two reason why someone would say yes, even though they still, obviously, if they felt worthy, they would have manifested that already. And guilt. A lot of the times they feel guilty. They feel like um, there is something about them that uh, is hard to love or whatever issues they may be dealing with. So when they're showing me that I'm speaking to myself, I hear very clearly, I feel lonely. So when I heard that I felt this immediate rush all over my body and I came to the realization that is the easy way to do shadow work. Now you're telling me, Pinky, what the fuck are you talking about? It's very simple. If you want to do shadow work, if you want to figure out exactly what it is that you're hiding, what it is that maybe your consciousness is not even aware, pay attention to how you feel. If you're trying or you're on the journey of manifesting love, as an example, and you're constantly being reminded of how difficult it is or that they're all in and then all of a sudden they pull back, how does that make you feel? When you are by yourself, speak to yourself, to the old version of you. When I felt lonely, I asked, why am I lonely? And then I, it, it was almost as if they were showing me a, a clip, right, from a movie. And it was different instances that I felt lonely when I was a child. But I started speaking to myself as the now to who I was then. And it clicked. That is the easiest form to heal and to do shadow work. Whenever you feel, okay, paying attention to how you're feeling, whenever you're feeling lonely, as an example, sit there with that feeling. Don't ignore it. Don't try to self-sabotage by rushing to someone, trying to 
distract yourself from feeling the loneliness. No, sit with it. Sit with it for a bit. And ask your older self, your older version, in what part of my life did I feel lonely? And then you'll start to remember or you're, you'll start to feel. Sometimes when we're children, by the way, we sometimes, our brain will automatically shut something down or suppress it because it's so painful and we don't want to relive it. So sometimes we forget, which is why sometimes when people go through major traumas, most often with time, they forget. And the reason for it is because it's your defense mechanism kicking in and your brain is trying to do you a favor and help you in the process of forgetting that. But everything that is experienced, it is stuck in our body and our energy. So sit there and try to remember when was the first time in childhood that you felt lonely? Was it when you were excited about something and you wanted to talk to your parents about it and they shut you down or they ignored you or they didn't pay attention? Was it when you were in elementary and you had a friend and you trusted them and then with time you guys kind of fell apart and you found yourself feeling lonely? When you start to do this, you are beginning to heal that process when you remember or when you have those memories start to come up, I want you to speak to yourself. I want you to talk to the old version of yourself and tell yourself, as an example, Pinky, I'm sorry that you felt lonely when this and this happened, but I am here now and I will take care of you and I will cherish you and I will love you and I will treat you kindly, and I will listen to you. And though it may sound crazy, by you speaking to yourself in the old version to now in the present, what you're doing is you are aligning yourself, right? Because there is a detachment there. Obviously, you weren't aware of this. There, This is in your subconscious. When you're able to link, when you're able to connect and acknowledge, not ignore, not suppress, but acknowledge, that's when you start to heal. That's when you start to empower yourself. That's when you start to change your limiting beliefs. That's when you start loving yourself. Doing this process in any single aspect doesn't have to be love. It can be in anything, absolutely anything. You want to manifest money. You want to buy your first house. You feel restricted. You feel like it's it never happened. You feel like your parents maybe never experienced that. Everyone around you hasn't experienced it. So we are growing up conditioning ourselves to believe that this also must be our destiny. But when you start to go back and you start to remember when was the first time that I felt like money was really difficult, that I felt like I was unable to feel financially secure. When you start to acknowledge that, and then you tell yourself, you know, as a child, if you grew up in poverty, as an example, you can speak to yourself and tell yourself, you know, as an example, Pinky, it was difficult and your parents did the best they could. But now you are a grown individual and I am here and I love you and I will help you build and I will help you grow and I will help you expand because that is our God-given right to expand, to grow for our soul to evolve. A lot of what we believe, a lot of what we hold on to strongly and passionately and intensely, most of the time, is not even our beliefs. It's that we were instilled these beliefs, that we were conditioned into these beliefs. I will give you an example. I'm sure that if you are of Hispanic or Latin descent, um, you always heard your parents say, money doesn't grow on trees. So then they start to create this fear around money. Oh, money must be must be bad or, you know, it, it's really hard. It's really difficult. And then you start to grow up and you start to believe that. When it comes to manifesting, it is very simple. You are aligning to your higher, to your higher self to be able to bring into your life what it is that you desire. 
everything we have been through up until now, everything we have experienced, every single experience we've ever had, whether it's in love, whether it's with romance, with finances, with career, with the people around us or the people we have the tendency of attracting, all of it has a lot to do with who you are inside or how you feel inside or how you see yourself because we are a reflection of our outside world. The moment you start to manifest, the moment you start to align yourself, the moment you take your power back, everything is going to change for you. And it starts with shadow work. Why? Because when you heal and when you start to create new belief systems, you have years of practicing those beliefs that most times are not even your beliefs. They were taught to you. You, let's say you're 20 years old. You've spent 20 years believing that. But I assure you, to manifest, it takes discipline and willingness. And when you start to do shadow work, to heal those aspects of you that feel unworthy, that feel shame, that feel embarrassed, that feel unworthy, whatever the situation may be, when you start to heal that and you start to prove to yourself how worthy you are, and that you deserve every happiness that you can ever imagine. We were here to experience life. And yes, with life, there is difficulty in the sense that we cannot control other people, right? Because everyone has free will, unless you're doing witchcraft. <laughs> but everyone has free will. The only one that can change is ourselves. And that is the hardest part when it comes to manifesting, you guys, because I cannot tell you. When we set out on the journey of manifesting many, many years ago, we had a falling out of friends, of connections, of relationships, even family members, relatives that started falling away because what happens is when you are here, right? Let's say you are at a job that you are very unhappy and you're trying to get to a job that makes you happy, that you're excited, that you're thankful and grateful about. You're here and you're trying to go here, right? But before there is that distancing, before we connect that distancing, there has to be alignment in the center. And alignment is understanding that the here and now, the new version of yourself, you have to align yourself to that version of yourself. And the only way to do that sometimes is that the universe is going to step in to move these things that you have here that are holding you back to free you, to propel you to get to this area of where you're trying to manifest. And sometimes, this is something I tell every client, every follower on my Instagram, when you are about to have a breakthrough is when shit starts to get real. Friendships start to fall out, relationships start to crumble, whatever it is. Why? Because you're sitting there trying to manifest, you're trying to do spell work, you're trying to pray to make something happen, right? And the way the universe can give you this is to understand, hey, Pinky, I'm going to give you that. But with that, understand that some things, some people, some situations need to go because that is the old version of yourself. We're trying to get you here the quickest way possible. So if you're sitting there trying to turn around your relationship, right? And that person is genuinely not for you and you're trying to manifest a healthy, loving relationship, guess what's going to happen? That relationship is going to come to an end. Why? Because it's the only way to free you to get to, to get you to where you want. It's the same thing with a job. It's the same thing with finances. It's the same any single aspect of your life. You have to be aware that things happen they're going to shake your ground because that's the only way we can evolve. The old version of yourself cannot be successful. If you are here and you're struggling and you're in poverty or your relationship is crumbling and you want to get here to a happy place, to a content place, to a place of feeling fulfilled, excited, blessed, comfortable working in that job that makes you really happy and you're making good money, you need to let go of this to be able to embrace this. So the universe is going to shake this up so that it can free you so that you can get here. I hope that was a simple. I know that sometimes, especially those of you guys that are 
on the journey of manifesting or trying to change your life, trying to um, turn it around, you're very capable of doing it. Very capable. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise because the most strongest person in this world that can ever stop you from achieving anything you want is yourself. And you decide that by what you think you deserve. All right, my lovelies, I will have another video going up for you guys to show you a little bit uh, more visual <laughs> on uh, what happens when you're in the process of manifestation. But shadow work, like I said, the easiest way to do shadow work is to start talking to yourself. Whenever you have those feelings that come up, acknowledge them. If you're in the manifestation stage of trying to manifest a relationship, as an example, and you feel lonely, which is completely normal, you've been in this vibration for so long, you're frustrated, you're like, I'm trying to manifest it and it's not working. Take time to yourself and speak to yourself, to the old child that you were whenever you felt unloved or whenever you felt unworthy or whenever you felt like you were too hard to love and speak to yourself and tell yourself, I love you. You are perfect. You are a perfect created design by God and the goddess. You possess everything that you can ever need because you are everything, everything that was, everything that will be, everything that has ever been. I love you and I am here for you and I will cherish you and I will love you and I will sit here in silence with you because you are not lonely. I am here. And by doing this, you are aligning yourself. You are surrendering. You are healing. All right, my lovelies, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, like, share, and comment. If you want to see more of these videos, definitely comment below and let me know. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Till then, bye-bye.